I'm going to show you guys a video today on uh, something I think is probably the most important thing in auto body painting, and that is color tinting. I have gone to a lot of classes and uh, had quite a bit of experience, 20 plus years, I guess. And uh, something I feel kind of separates the men from the boys and is extremely difficult to do. And uh, I think once you understand it and you understand some of the tricks and the techniques that uh, you'll have a better grasp on it and be able to do a lot better. So there you go. Uh, so basically it all starts out with uh, the color sphere. This is probably 20 something years old. So there's a little bit of paint over spray on it, but uh, this is a, basically a color tinting chart. And I got this, I used to spray DuPont Chroma Premier which was a solvent baseline. I don't think they even have it anymore. I'm pretty sure they DuPont went to Exalta and this is gone. So, but this will be a good reference. And this is, I got a lot of this documentation and material in a coloring, color tinting class I went to. And so basically this is the color sphere. And so you go back to even just with house paints and whatnot, there's some basics. And so here's, here's what it looks like. So here you have yellow which is a primary color, and you have blue, which is a primary color, and you have red, which is a primary color. Now, how you get your secondary colors is you mix yellow and red, and that makes orange, and blue and red make violet, and yellow and blue make green. Most people know that from the Ziploc zip commercial. So, these charts are extremely important when you're tinting colors. Uh, most paint lines that you'll use will actually have a chart, a color tinting chart. So, Basically, this is the hue, which is the actual color you see. In the center of the chart is the value. That's the lightness or the darkness of a color. And the chroma is how clean or dirty a color or the richness or the purity of the color. So, for example, um, it, basically you have white and black and your metallics at the center of the sphere. So anytime you're making a color, say gold, for example, You'll have some, some form of aluminums, whether it be a coarse aluminum, a fine aluminum, a medium aluminum, so on and so forth. You'll have a white, a black, and so that'll make gray. And then as you start to add toners or color to it, it'll bring the richness of the purity. So the more color you put in, the more it actually pulls it out of the gray scale and starts to make it gold. So most golds, grays, so on and so forth, start out with silver, black. And then as you add the colors to it, like for example, you know, you'll add a yellow oxide or like a red oxide to aluminum. That's what starts to turn the color from like a light gray into a gold. So basically understanding this sphere is super important. I have another chart here. This is a master tinting chart. And if you look real closely, it tells you the toner numbers on this chart and where they're positioned on the chart. So this also shows you, for example, here, and this is in solid colors and this is in metallic colors. But for example, let's say you're tinting a white. With DuPont, 801J was their high strength white. So that's at the center of the sphere or in the value portion of it. The black is the 807J and that's a low strength toner. So they had low strength and high strength toners. A uh, high strength just means a high pigment toner. Low strength means it's a, it's a weaker version. So basically, it, you'd like say for example, Toyota 040 white would be, uh, it's a pretty common color, 056, they're super common colors. But, and most of these whites almost have a lot of the same toners in them, just variations of each. But say for example, you're doing Toyota 040 white, super common color, and it has 801J, which is a high strength white, 807 which is low strength black and then you have like an 882 which is uh your yellow oxide it'd be somewhere in this chart in this region of the chart and then 884 which is you know somewhere in here so basically you would look at it like white and black make gray and then as you add yellow and say as you add red it'll turn it kind of orange so it'll it'll be a like a a little bit, it's cleaner, it's dirtier than white. And then as you add the yellow and the red, it kind of gives it an orange shade. So that's basically kind of an overview on how this color sphere works. So 
for example, I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. So I recently did my mom KO'd her fender on her uh, Toyota. So I was nice enough to put a new fender on it for her, but I panel shot the fender, so I didn't want to blend color into the door. And here's an example of, I made one adjustment to it. So I made these sprout cards, and these are actually really awesome sprout cards. These are Sickens uh, Axon Nobel metal sprayout cards. So these work super awesome. And I don't know if you can see the color difference on the camera, I mean, I think you actually can. So what the formula started out as is right here, and then as I made one adjustment, it came to it, it brought it to this level right here. So basically, this toner or this formula had 14. This is a lesinol formula. This had 14, which is a high strength white. It had 280 grams of that. 41, which is a blue green transparent. Um, and I guess I can tell you how many it had uh, 0.2 of that. It had 72, which is a red orange, at 0.3 of that. And then it had 61, which is a yellow green. It had uh, 0.3 of that. So basically, when I took this color, which is, it was greener than the car. And that's how you look at it, is how is the spray out card versus the car. So the spray out card was greener than the car. So just for after doing it for a while, you kind of start to know what toners to put in it. And at the time, I didn't have access to a Lesinol bank, but I did have access to a Sickens bank. So I put one about 0.1 or one drop, roughly, of 279, which is Sickens Magenta. So which brought the color in, and it was pretty much panel match. So I didn't paint the, I didn't blend my color into the door. It looked great. So you can see how I shifted it from like a blue green to a little bit of a redder version. Hopefully you guys can see that, but you can really see it when I turn it sideways. So uh, there's a lot to it and I'll go into depth as much as uh, possible. But uh, so basically when you make these spray out cards and these are like I said, sick and spray out cards, which are awesome because they're metal. So it should duplicate uh, what's on the car. A lot of them are paper spray out cars. They may absorb the solvent a little bit different and not give you a super, I mean, they're accurate, but not as accurate as you're going to get with metal. So basically you want to make your spray out cars exactly how you're painting the vehicle. So same air pressure, same distance, same, you know, however wet you spray the color. So if you spray the color really wet on the car, you want to spray it really wet on your spray out card. If you put it on lighter on your spray out card, you want to put it lighter on your spray out card. So if you don't duplicate this, then you're never going to get an accurate color match anyways. So that's kind of one of the rules of thumb. Uh, another big thing is letting your cards dry. Uh, solid cards, cards dry darker and metallics dry lighter. So if you don't let them dry, you're not going to get an accurate version of the color and then basically all the tinning you're doing is kind of worthless because you're not so so give your sprout cards plenty of ample time to dry so another thing that's huge and it's absolutely imperative that you do is you understand there's three ways to view a color so say for example this is the side of a car and I have a sprout card so I want to put the sprout card on the you know on the panel and then depending how I look at the spray out card is how I'm going to tint the color uh, so there's three points three ways to look at a color you look at it from head on that's called the face of the color if you look at it from a 45 degree angle that's the near spec and then you look at it directly down the side of the color that's the side cast is what they call it in my opinion, the side cast is the most important and it's what I tint to first. I would rather have it closer to the side than I would to the face. I mean, the face is also important and I feel a lot of guys mix this up and they actually concentrate more on the face, but the side is the body of your color and it's, it is, in my opinion, the most important. If you have a dark side cast and you're spraying a silver metallic, you wouldn't have all the blend room in the world to get rid of the color. You couldn't, unless you blend the whole side of the car, you'll never get rid of a dark side cast. So I always tint to the side first. I mean, obviously with solid colors too, you wanna, you wanna look at both either way, but especially with metallics and whatnot, I mean, and even solids, your side cast is 
the most important in my opinion. Like I said, the face is important, but I tint to the side cast. I would much rather have a little bit, a better side cast than I would a face. You can kind of get rid of, get away with the face being a little off, but I don't believe you can get away with the side cast. So that's a huge thing. Um, biggest thing too, look, going back to these sphere, the color sphere. So depending on how you tint a color, and let's just say, for example, uh, you have the 801J, 807, like we were talking, the Toyota 040. And then you had the yellow oxide and the red oxide. So it's like white and black make gray. And then yellow and red kind of make that orange color. So here's an example. Uh, and one thing I do too, which is huge, is I measure everything out on the scale when I tint. Uh, I feel it's super important to measure things out. A lot of people just go by drips and drops and glugs. But I'm very calculated when I tint colors. Uh, meaning I like to tint on the scale. That way I know how much I'm tinting. If I add 0.1, if I add 0.5 of a color. And the reason I do that is mainly so I can, A, I can keep a mental reference. And then B, I can duplicate it if I need to. So say, for example, I'm tinting, uh, you know, this color, for example, Toyota 040. And I added 0.1 of the 279 toner. And that was awesome. And let's say I, I sprayed the car and I ran out of the color in the process and I wanted to make some more. Well, I know that if I just put, I remake the formula and I put 0.1 in again, boom, I'll be right in range. I might have to tint it a little bit, but at least I have an idea. And that's, that's a simple thing. It's just 0.1 of that particular toner. But say, for example, you put one gram of a low strength black, 0.3 of yellow oxide and 0.2 of red oxide. If you have to duplicate that again, or if the body man scratches it and you need to make some ground coat, is what they call it, which is, say you still have some paint, but you don't quite have enough to spray the entire job, then I would mix ground coat and try to tint the ground coat to get it super close to the actual, what I call, match paint. So if I just had three ounces of this left and the body man scratched the fender, I could make up you know, a cup, three ounces of another of the original formula pre tint it with what I did to this color, and then basically I'll be right in the ballpark, and then I can top coat it with the actual match paint, and everything will match. So, um, these are some super important things. So basically, going back to this chart one more time. So basically, and one other thing I like to do with color tinting, which I feel really helps is I like to leave out colors sometimes. Uh, I feel like leaving colors out, and I was told by a good friend of mine who kind of showed me the ropes and tinting colors in the beginning, was it's kind of like a reverse haircut. So once you cut too much hair off, you can't glue it back on. Well, it's the same in color tinting, is once you put too much toner in it, you can't take it out. So for example, if you're tinting a white, like we were talking 040, and it has the 801, which is the high strength white, and it has the 807, which is the low strength black, and it has way too much 807. It say it has 400 grams of white and three grams of 807, and the and it's really dark. It's it's gray as can be. Well, it would take say it's it's double the amount of black there should be. So they really only should have put 1.5 grams of black in, but they put three grams in. Well, it would take 400 more grams of white to clean up the black versus if I make the color and I leave out 1.5 or 50% of the black, I feel that's super important. So, and sometimes you're better off to do that because you start out with a lighter color and you can always add some. So say for example, I feel like this color, or say I make a spray out card um, and the color is too dark. Well, there's options, I can go with alternates, uh, but say there's no alternate, say there's not a lighter version of the formula, uh, what I could do is basically leave out the low strength black. I'll say leave half of it. I mean, you could leave all of it out and just add it back in as you need it and uh, as you make your spray out cards. So that's a huge thing, but I always do it on percentages too as well. So I not only measure, like I said before, I'm calculated. I not only measure, but I do it based on percentages. So for example, if... Uh, you know, there's th three grams of the low strength black. If I leave out 10%, that's 0.3. You just move the decimal over. So I could put in 2.7 grams of black. So there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Uh, one other thing too. 
So if you're looking at your color sphere and they're saying, you know, they say yellow and blue make green and yellow and yellow and red make orange. One thing they say is you're not supposed to use what they call kill colors because it'll dirty a color, which is essentially in this, this is what I did was I used a kill color. Something was too light and bluish green and I added like a bluish red to it and it ran. So basically what it does is if something's too green, right? And you add red, it brings it across the chart and it muddies the color. Well, in this case, the color needed to be a little bit muddy or they call it uh, sat, uh, desaturated, which desaturated means it's more towards the gray side. Saturated with color means it has more toner or pigment in it. So, like I said, as you take a color and you add more color to it, it makes it stronger and richer with more color. It's not as gray. It's more pure with color. So, like I said, if you had something that was a little too green, you could add some red to it, and it's basically a kill color. So, uh, if you just go directly across the chart. Something's too violet, you can add some yellow, that kind of thing. So I feel that's one area in color tinting that when they tell you in the class not to do, but I find it's useful uh, and sometimes you gotta break the rules. The one thing I also find is sometimes they tell you not to use kill colors, but yet they'll have kill colors in the formula. So uh, I would say it's a general rule is to follow their advice, but if you know the color that's gonna adjust it, then I would use a kill color. Um, one other thing, and this is a good point, and they're going back to how to read this chart. So that's the super important thing about color tinting is reading a chart. But if you look, say for example, something, say you're doing a color and it's, you know, the white and the black and the yellow and the red, kind of, it's sitting in this range, you know, and you want to pick a different color to tint it, say it needs to be, you know, dirtier, it needs to be dirtier and yellower. You could go to like this toner, see? So depending on where the toners are at on the chart, depends on how, how dirty or clean the toners are. So this toner 890 is gonna be dirtier because it's closer to the center of the sphere than this 844J, which is right on the edge of the sphere, which means it's more rich. It's a, it's a cleaner toner, it's not a muddy toner. So hopefully I kind of gave you guys some, uh, real good insight in how to tint colors. I mean, there's a lot to it. And I just kind of, I'm, I'm kind of making this video on the fly and just going on, going off of things that I know and that I was taught. So hopefully this helps you understand the chart. And uh, I think once you understand kind of the way the color sphere works, it'll give you a better idea to how to, uh, how to kind of attack a color and really dial it in. So any rate, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'd, I'd be happy to answer your questions or whatever else I can help you with. And so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.